but yet you sent a thousand dollars to Benny. Benny, and today he spent all your pennies. Benny spent all your pennies. And now he's telling you, sorry. How many of those millions is, is he going to return to the people? Secondly, I have another video I want to quickly touch on. Um, again, a direct threat, a, a direct threat, and a warning to the church. Um, this is I take it personally because I'm a preacher of the gospel. I'm a um, I'm an evangelist, an apostle, apostle called by God from God. I believe so um, through the evidence of what is what He has used my life to execute so far, my generation and many things and greater, greater things to come. Um, I'm also in a prophetic, very clear, very evident. This is not gimmicks. So what I want to share with you touched me and broke my heart. It's about, um, uh, many of you call him Pastor Benny In. I call him Benny In. Um, I just want to touch on certain things that breaks my heart. And I really pray that we are the fight. It's not about passion, but it's about being one, being awoken from our spiritual um, sluggardry oh, and oh. Um, being told to wake up from sleep, sleep. Oh. So I want you to please listen to this. I want you to please watch this. I want you to um, digest what is being said and I'll come back to analyze this with you and I pray it edifies us. So let's roll that clip as we get into this. I'm a human being. I've made mistakes. I remember Oral telling me he made mistakes by the, by the truckloads. Uh, we all make mistakes. The two things I regret most in ministry, I was not too wise a number of times with prophecy. Um, Number one, number one, I had guests come to the Crusades uh, that I think brought harm to not only people's lives, but also to my rep reputation because their, their prophecies were not really prophecy. They went outside the borders of, the borders of redemption. Because anything that's outside redemption uh, is not prophecy. Uh, we know, of course, that prophecy... It's for edification, exhortation, and comfort, but it must be within redemption. And when, uh, when, when people come who uh, go beyond that, we should, not, we should not allow that. And I said that I allowed it, and then I stopped. But that was years ago when I stopped. And then there were, there were times when I thought God had showed me something that he wasn't showing me, and I spoke it out. But in 1 Corinthians 13, we see very clearly that we all prophesy in part. That means we don't see the full picture. And sadly, and I wish I could go back and fix it, but sadly, uh, there were some prophecies I gave that were not uh, accurate or from the Lord, but uh, who's perfect? And for that, of course, I ask people to forgive me. I'm just human. Okay, uh, let's, stop like let's stop that for a second. Let's stop that. Let's stop that. Can we pause it? Because of copyright, I can't allow, uh, I can't allow um, it to flow all the way. So I'm going to have to interject every now and again. So, um, so Pastor Benny, um, uh, um, a wonderful man of God, great man of God. I'll, I really respect his achievements for the kingdom. Um, God is using him to do mighty things, wrought mighty and powerful miracles, and beautiful things is done for the kingdom but for some years now if you listen and you've really been a, a fervent follower of the ministry of god of my life and through my life you will realize i've been talking about pastor benny are you listening i've been warning and saying pastor benny lost it a long time ago and when i started saying it then Quite a few people left my ministry, left the church. Um, they said, I'm jealous, who am I? I'm just a, I remember some people said, I'm just a little rat to talk about him and whatnot. How well, dare you talk about him? And I said, listen, I am not insulting this man. I'm calling this man to salvation. You know, even as a preacher, whether you're the biggest, the, the smallest, or the nobody, one thing is real. When you finish preaching this gospel, one day you will stand before your maker. 
and you see all the crowd you have, they will not be there. They will not be there. It lost a long time. I, I, people abused me. Now, in the last one, two years, even two years ago, I prophesied that God told me that his time has come. You go and watch the prophet. He's there. The videos don't lie. I prophesied about him and T.D. Jakes himself, T.D. Jakes. The prophet, I said, their time has come. Go and check the prophecies. God is giving them time because of their, because of their genuine, at some point, genuine sacrifice for the kingdom. God is giving them now time to make things right. It's like now they're going through damage control. I said many years ago that, about two, three years ago, I said, these men have done so much harm lately that it's about to destroy all of their godly legacy and which could negatively impact ministry for young preachers like us who are trying to genuinely advance or further advance the gospel to the world. Make it so hard. No matter you are great or small, in fact, the more you preach this gospel, the deeper you press into the revelation of God's word, the deeper you press into, in, into a, a dynamic anointing to deliver the gospel to the earth, the more accountable you will be during judgment. You can see, preachers will not be judged like members. It's a lie. A preacher will face more thorough judgment than the members. I will be judged than you. Because you can't have access to a di di dimension of grace and think that you will get away with just anything you want to do. So, I mean, it, it's painful to see this, but it is there. That's why I pity our young generation, young ministers who don't want to labor, they don't want to do it genuinely. Everybody just want, just want to blow, become the most famous. The man, the man that impacted Benny in and announced him, his name was late Archbishop Benson in Daosa, and that is the man that prophesied my birth in 1984 to my mother at the International Airport. My question is, if late Archbishop Benson in Daosa was alive to see and to witness the, 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 the diverse acts of people like Pastor Benny Inn and, uh, and some of these many bishops, would he endorse such? Would he accept such? I know and I've seen videos, the little about, the little I know about Papa Benson in Daosa of Blessed Memories, he is a man that would have ripped into all of them without any form of packaging, without any form of, 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 of pleasing anybody. He would have ripped into them. Would, would let our Bishop Benson in Daosa of Blessed Memory accept this nonsense? This, you know, I've said this many times, I was attacked. I'm always attacked when I speak this truth. But when it happens, nobody comes back and say, Apostle John, anyone, we bless God for your life. You, you indeed heard from God and spoke as led by the Spirit of God. Now he's, he's, he's saying that he gave false prophecies. And he spoke. And, you know, um, question is, he, he caused some dangers. Do you know what it is to deliver? Thus says the Lord. Who is it that says the thing and the command to pass when the Lord? Who is it that decreed the thing and the command to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Who is that person? We will give account for everything we say in the name of the Lord. Many of you want to be quick prophetesses. You want to become a, you want to become a prophetess all of all, overnight. Don't worry. You will face it one day. You want to be a prophet overnight. One day you will face it. You want to be an apostle overnight. One day you will face God. And then you will realize that these things we use our mouth to say, Thus says the Lord. You better be careful if God has not put it in your mouth. God is giving Pastor Benny in. What he's doing now is damage control. Damage control. And I am so thankful to God that God is giving him, this lovely man, an opportunity to fix things, to put his house in order. The question is, how many pastors or bishops or apostles or prophets or evangelists or teachers had this second chance, this opportunity to put their house in order before they died? So this is a precious one. And this is not an opportunity for just Benny in alone, but to preachers like me and to listeners like you. We are hearing this, we are seeing this. It's a pain. It's a pain. Everybody wants to say thus says the Lord because why? It makes you look like you're next to God. You are God's body body. You are God's PA. God will always speak to you. When you say thus says the Lord, and guess what? People say thus says the Lord because why? The next thing that follows is give me some money, money, money. Money, 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 money. Give me some money, money, money. Because the next thing, when the person says thus says the Lord, oh, God must speak to him when he says give me 10 million and you get 50 million back. I don't do that. I don't do that. I prophesy to you, I tell you, goes mine out. I will tell you to go and fast and pray, see God's face for yourself. You heard it for himself. You heard it there. You heard it there. 
And what pains me the most is when he talked about money. But that's just, you know, the way it is. Yet there were times when I did not miss it. And then the other one is prosperity. Mm. And that's been a very difficult one for me. Uh, when I started in ministry, it was simple. And then the ministry grew. I was invited to go to what they call praise at And I think that's praise where my troubles yeah. began. Now, he said everything, when he started ministry, everything was fine. But trouble began when he joined something. He praise at he mentioned. I don't, I don't know what that means. But let me tell you one thing many of you don't know about the prophetic ministry, apostolic ministry. The moment God has called you and placed a dynamic anointing on your life, the next thing you'll be invited or the next kind of places you'll be invited to will be places that they use what God has placed on your life to raise money. Money. And guess what? It's not about God. It's about the Benjamins and how much the Benjamins, how much, how much, how much target the Benjamins has got to, to be made. They, they tell you, listen, we need to make $4 million. You are anointed. That anointing can be an influence because of the affluence, of, 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 because of how affluential you are. You can, you can use this anointing to influence people to give. And they'll come and tell you, God said, 50 people give $1,000. God said, 50 people give $1,000. God said. It's not wrong for people to give. But when you say God said, hmm, that's where the problem kicks in. And he said the problem started. You see that when he was invited to praise the tongue. Now, prior to that, this man was clean in ministry. The same thing with a prophet called Brian Khan as well. Remember, Brian Khan had to put a complaint. Brian Khan has his flaws. We all have our flaws. But I love when Brian Khan came out, he came out, he pulled out of all this TBN and all of these platforms, God TVs and raised money. It's all about marketing and merchandising Jesus. He pulled out of it because he said they were using the prophetic anointing on his life for money raising. And boom, they went for him and almost destroyed his ministry. He, he, he talked about it openly. Do you know how many times I've been called to raise money? Why do you think that I don't go to certain places? I don't get invitations to certain places because I've been invited in the past before. One, two, three, four times to come to a particular program. And they would tell, listen, they would tell me from the get-go. Prophet John or Apostle John, we need you to get us some money. You can raise, please raise money for us. I'm telling you the truth. Raise money for us. We, we have a target of $100,000, $50,000. And I would say no. But when God confirms, see, you know what? I have only raised money for two ministries in about in 10 years and counting ministry. Money twice. One was for a church in Ipswich. When the Lord laid it in my heart that there was a need for that church, that the pastor was keeping, and the pastor didn't announce it, the pastor kept that need behind the scene. I raised that day in one service, almost six grand in one hour. Everything was paid for. The other one was one of the nations I visited, and all of the money went to the ministry work because why they go, they do outreach every day, and the resources was genuinely needed. And I didn't ask for my own cuts. I didn't say my percentage is this. But what we're having is now the anointing being used. As a marketing franchise, a marketing platform and tools through which, through which, through which to raise money. Now he said that was where his problem started from. Let's let's carry on with that clip. But uh, sadly, you get kind of in a place that becomes difficult. You don't know what to do and how to get out of it. Stop. So he said. So it, 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 so he said. He found himself in a place where it became difficult and he did not get out of it. So for a long time, he knew that even the man was raising money in the name of the Lord. It was wrong. It was wrong. And the question is, how would they have broken out? So technically, it's a stronghold. I remember when I visited one of these countries, one was it Barbados, one of them, last year, when an apostle came and came online and was saying, and whilst I was ministering and saying that, um, they want to bless me. They want to raise $70,000 to bless me. The Lord said, no, that money is not for you. And don't accept any money raised in your name because I'm not in it. And I stood up and I stopped it. I shut it down immediately. I became hated. A whole new scandal was raised against me in the same country. But one thing I do know is I am thankful that my heart is clean today. One day God will justify me for standing up and saying, no, I am not for sale. 
if I really want to charge you, think I'll charge you seventy thousand dollars? Is that how cheap I am? Some watches are worth like what a million dollar wristwatch. You think that seventy thousand dollars? That is seventy thousand dollars is not even enough to pay for the for, for one year's rent or lease for the property the premises are used for the church here in London. So if it's about the money, let's go deep. If not, don't start using me to buy yourself and your family a way out of your financial problems, but my face to endorse such. Because you know what? You know what made me laugh was that they were saying the one that raised money. It was apostolic invasion. They used my pictures on their platform, but the account was their account. You see that? My picture, their platform, but the account was their account. But when, if you look at the hall and the setup, it was their anniversary. My face had nothing on it. It was their anniversary, everything about them. But when it came to the money collection time, it was my face, my team, my title that God gave me to raise money for them. Thank God I stood up. And this was happening today. This was happening today. Let's quickly carry on with that clip because of time. I came to the conclusion in 2019 that I did not want to be a part of the gimmickry of it. Ooh. And I still stand by that. But sadly, stop, I let stop, pressure... Stop. I don't need to listen to him anymore. 2019 is when Pastor Benny came to the realize that he's tired of the gimmickry. So, do you know what gimmicks is? So many, many supposed apostles and prophets, all they do in the name of raising funds are all gimmicks. Oh, you're shocked. Oh, you're surprised. How many of you saw into the ministry? Then someone like Apostle John, who will pray for you personally behind the scene, you give him one dollar. And even that one dollar, you, you make noise as though you fed his whole family. But yet, you sent a thousand dollars to Benny. Benny, and today, he spent all your pennies. Benny spent all your pennies. And now he's telling you, sorry. How many of those millions is, is he going to return to the people? Maybe he might not know who gave, but how many of those millions actually went to the glory of God? I just want to say something. And I want to sound very straight. I want to say something, yeah? I'm flipping tired and I've heard enough. I've had enough of M pastors that think they can do what they want to do in the name of papahood and fatherhood and, um, and, and, and daddyhood, making it so difficult for our generation to break through with the word of God in our dispensation. Enough of this crap. But what Pastor Ben is doing is saving his face, damage control, putting his house in order, and I pray God help him and may God, may God visit him because of his humility. And that's my prayer, because honestly, if I, if I see Pastor Benny today, I will still kneel down and greet him. That's how much God has used him. I will never disrespect him. God has used him. But what, has, what he, he's done also caused damage. And it's what is affecting our generation, where these days, the moment they, people hear you're an apostle or a prophet, they use one paint to paint everybody without first discerning who you are. I was talking to someone last night, and I said, I've got missions to a country called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And the bill for this mission is well estimating about £30,000. And we still we still have about £14,000 to go. Urgent £14,000. I hear this. And I said to myself, Lord, you know, this is the human, the human side of me saying, why, 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 why are you even struggling for £14,000? You know, you can just use what you have to get what you need. And I said, sit and get lost. But you see people who will say they have missions. Something estimated for 10,000, they will tell you 100,000. And even the 10,000 plus the 90,000, they will keep it to themselves and use only 5,000. And once they go to the same place, it's the people that are still there that will fund everything that God has given them 10 times the money for. But it is someone like us that the enemy wants to see suffer and pay the price for the greed, greed of such preachers. Make, made it so hard. It's made it so hard. And I, I really want you to please pray for Pastor Benny. Pray for T.D. Jakes. 
pray for their generation. I've, I've been preaching this for the past three years. I've been preaching and saying this for the past three years. These guys, they let us down. The mantles that was passed on to them, those mantles, God has seized it from them. So they can't pass it us. They can't pass it to us now. Thankfully, God is directly giving the mantles. I've been saying it for the past three years. God is there are vacancies in the spirit. If you listen to my ministry very well, I've been saying it. Vacancies in the spirit. And God, God is not looking for people crying. God is choosing who He wants to put the mantle of. The mantle of God on my life, I did not choose it. The mantle chose me. I know the price I've paid. Listen to me. When I was homeless, I had an opportunity to make millions. But I said no. I'm not perfect. I have my flaws. I'm praying every day for strength and help. But I'm telling you, this doesn't make it any easier. And I want this opportunity to, to, to remind us of the very reason why we as believers have to be very discerned. There are many of you, 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 you had lands. You sell your land. You sow 50,000 to some pastor that don't, that don't even do nothing for the kingdom. No reflection of Christ in it. But the ones that genuinely around you that God has planted, you will put one dollar, one cent, and you will still tell him what to do with it, insult him. But the ones that are the chronic thieves, they've, they've, they've covered themselves with titles, fame, and name that God gave to them. They've used that to block your eyes. They're the ones you invest in. This is what pains and hurts my heart. And there are times when sometimes I'm, I won't lie to you that sometimes I just say, you know what? Maybe I need to, I need to, I need to let the people taste a little bit of this medicine they want and become that kind of prophet or apostle that they would so worship because they tend to worship all of these fake ones, these ones that brag and carry themselves as something. And the Lord will say, Don't do that. Stay true to the calling. And I just try. And I thank God for Mama. She's always keeping me on my toes. And I have good people around me. My, my team always remind me, Apostle, please, I don't change. I have good people around me, friends and counselors that will say, don't change, sir. Just keep going. But it doesn't make it easy. Seeing this video touched me and I thought I'd share with you. I want to know what you think about um, the analysis. And there are, there are many other things, how many more I can say, but I've got to go. I've got school runs to do. Um, I'm still a family man, even though I'm a businessman and do other things, content creator and whatnot. I'm still a family man. But just before I go, I want you to do three things for me. Make sure you click on the like button if you haven't yet done so. Sorry, we started late. Our computer just crashed again. Um, we're going to work on that and upgrade it. Um, secondly, um, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't yet shared, make, it, make sure you share this. And if you have something you want to say, you want to have to this, go on the comment section, not the live chat. Go on the comment section underneath, underneath this video. Leave your thoughts on what you feel about what's happening and the analysis today. Um, if there's anything you also want me to talk on that is affecting the church or affecting you as a, as a believer, send the video clips to me. Leave your comments in the comment section. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to get your thoughts. And I pray and I hope you would not miss it. I will not miss it. Keep praying for me.